Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Uh, today, our topic we're going to be talking about is our baling roller. And I wanted to introduce you to this is Amber. Amber? <laughs> and Kendall? <laughs> Sorry about that, hey Amber. Hey, guys. You just got a lot Amber. He's real pretty. <laughs> oh, <what? Yeah. laughs> anyway, these are the manufacturers of our baling roller. And Kendall came to me several years ago when I had my plans in the original baling roller. And he said, Greg, have you ever thought about, you know, manufacturing these and selling them? I'm like, yeah, I've thought about it, but I'm not a welder. And at that time, Kendall was working in town, and uh, he said, well, I can weld, and let's, let me build a prototype. And so he brought my bale and roller home, the original one, and he built a prototype from that, and that's where we started. But since then, we've made a lot of upgrades, and that's what it's all about. You know, you're always trying to make it better. And so we're going to cover some of those updates today, but I just wanted Amber and... Amber <laughs> and Kendall, uh, tell a little bit about your all selves. I'm Kendall or Amber, whichever one Greg <laughs> wants it doesn't matter. We uh, we're very blessed to be with Greg. We had a job in town, worked for 18 years, and I seen a video of Greg's deal, and he had uh, one of these unrollers, and I thought that I could build it, so. We took a little time on our very first paid vacation in 18 years and <laughs> built a prototype. Yeah. And now with the help of Greg and Jan, this is what we do full time on our farm with the Reject Ranch. And you've got four wonderful we have, kids. We four have kids. four children. Three boys and a girl. And Tell a little bit about them, Amber. Uh, <laughs> they're a handful. What's, got what's twin, the ages? Twin 11 year olds, a nine year old, those are the three boys, and then a five year old girl. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And you've never seen a cuter five-year-old girl. She's <laughs> cute as a bug. She takes We're after Amber. Mm -hmm. This Amber. No, yeah. <laughs> no this one. <laughs> oh, no. But we try to build these things so our kids could use them. That was our goal whenever we started. We have a whole bunch of old ones that didn't make the cut, and we keep trying to improve them every chance we get. Yep. And maybe it's because I'm lazy, but I'd really like for our kids to be able to feed hay. Yep. So, yep. well, that, not everybody can afford to go out and buy a you know thirty twenty five to forty thousand dollar tractor right, right. with the unrollers on the back, and then you get them out here in your pasture in the winter time when it's been raining and snowing and it's muddy, you absolutely destroy your farm. And so, with an ATV, which is right here, a lot of people have side by sides right. or ATVs. You can go out and feed your whole cow herd with that. And it's just, it's a huge, it's a huge uh, changer. Uh, we've got a baling roller right there. It goes on the back of our tractor. A three-point hitch baling roller. Guess how many bales we unrolled with it last winter, Kendall? None. Zero. Wow. And the See? reason was we have a four-wheel drive tractor, okay? We could have went out on any of our farms and done it. We did left ruts like this. And with the <laughs> ATV, we were able to take uh, Kendall's baling roller that he manufactures and actually go out and feed 300 and some head of cattle in you know 15 20 minutes by unrolling them and you know jan you mentioned earlier about what happened to the customers yesterday with the calves yeah um somebody came and they'd lost six calves in a bale and roller and not no a bell bell ring. ring and uh they were unrolling by hand and messing up their backs yep. and so what what's the cost of a bale and roller that's twenty four hundred dollars how much is a tractor well, it depends what you buy, but they're, they can be quite pricey. But the other thing is the weight. Right. The, the weight. Well, like I tell people is I can get on my four-wheeler in this bale unroller, and I can feed a bale of hay before you've let your hydraulics warm up in your tractor. Yeah. Or what happens the first time you go out on that zero or negative degree day and the tractor doesn't start? Yeah. yeah. And what does electricity cost to keep them plugged in? And <sighs> like another water heater right and these four wheelers <laughs> they start cold it doesn't really yeah. matter i mean the, the, nothing's perfect this isn't the godsend for it but it it sure is the easiest thing i've ever used well i'll tell you what you can take these and you can hook them on to that four wheeler and you can go over some pretty rough land and so we're going to show you how easy it is amber's going to hook it up really light so gotta speak up gotta, amber it's light what's it sometimes Sometimes if it's uneven ground, you just shimmy it back and forth a little bit to help get it going. Of course, Kendall parked it way far away for you. <laughs> yeah, he wanted to make sure that I knew what I was doing. There you go. And just like that, it's ready to roll. Ready to 
rock and roll. So, unroll. <laughs> yeah, unroll. Uh, <laughs> <see>? <laughs> I like your wit today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so we're ready to travel to the bale. And so with that, Kendall, you want to get that side, I'll get this side. But what you do whenever you hook them, we started putting, for the people who unroll, four foot bales. We've started using these spring clips. We yeah, speak them. loud too. because They'll the be on some new ones. We haven't got them in yet. But what you do is whenever you got your four foot bale, is as you turn it will go all to one side or the other. This is free and the chain flops out and it rolls out and your bale doesn't stay on. So whenever you push these into your bale and you can use a, a small hammer to drive them in if they're tight. But we just hook these up. And now as you're going, your chain can't come back out. But this is about the size of hammer. You can use a little bit bigger. Most people try those big 16 pound sledgehammers. You just don't need it. You can normally just drive them in with a two or three pound sledge and be just fine. We're kicking them. But we kick them in. We don't, you, we don't even carry a hammer with ours. And like I said, our boys do it. push them in, we twist them, we bring them back out, and the second time we push, they normally go all the way in. You don't have to force it hard. Right. It doesn't take a lot. So if you're unrolling bigger bales, like, you know, five by fives or, or whatever, you don't need to drive these all the way in. So you've got a big spike here on a bigger bale, so you might go in about right there. That's it. So once you get it in, let's say a foot, Put the chain on where it can't come out. Do the same on the other side. It's just that much more spike. You don't need to be driving in your bale. Um, we Kendall's. Uh, that's the original design. I've had a foot on mine. We call this the foot. If you don't have that foot on there. You're going across the paddock, and the bale gets smaller, smaller, smaller. Now it's riding on here, and you hit a rock or a stump. And let's say you had it all the way in. You've just put a 45 degree bend in your spike. But with these feet on there, that's not going to happen. Uh, Kendall also put uh, springs on here. Kendall, you want to talk about the springs you put on? Let me turn over this way. Well, we so. had a problem on the originals. Whenever it would get over center, it would just fall straight down. And it hit a guy in the shoulder. And we, Greg was nervous and I was nervous. And we didn't want anything like that. So we come up with these springs. And what they do is... They hold it from going all the way down. It, it, you have to winch it now all the way down. It can't free fall. But what that also helps you do is whenever you have a bale on here, it's perfectly centered over here. So the machine holds most of the weight and not your ATV. So whenever you get it to wherever you're going with it, you will grab a hold of it and hook into it and unhook your strap. What's that? metal there. It, it will crank all the way down to the top. So whenever you have a hay bale on here, it rides right here. It can't go any lower. So whenever you get to where you're going, these springs are kind of a help assist and help you push the bale up. Wasn't designed like that, but that's kind of how it worked out. You want to talk so, about this winch? These are Dutton Lansing winches. They have a five-year warranty on the gears. Um, they're right in Nebraska. They're super tough. They're two-speed. So that way your our kids can now pick up a big bale because it's gear reduction. So therefore you can pick up amazing amounts of weight with a little bit of a crank here unlike the original ones that we used so direct drive they were direct drive and they come out of china they were just you, you had some that were good and some that were bad these guys stand behind them and they seem to work great for us so far now when you have a bale on whenever you have a bale on and you're getting ready to unroll it you will okay now i also have a video on our Reject Ranch Facebook page. You will do that and then you just push it right up and the bale sets on the ground. Okay. 
and then you don't it, go to our Reject Ranch Facebook page. Keeps you from tearing up your winches. And check out the ABCs of the Greg Judy bail unroller. <laughs> and that way, you, the winch doesn't free spin. If you uh, if you just let it go, it'll free spin out. And what's going to happen is either that handle's going to hit you, or it's going to flop around and hit something and break this plastic deal off. And it's a booger to winch these back up without that plastic deal. And then after you're done unrolling your bale, you just tug it back up. Now, what's what are you toggling there? This is your lever. This is the gear crank up, and this is to let it back down. Both directions. Both directions. Yep. Um, the other thing we've picked up on is uh, when you're unrolling hay in the springtime, and it's really, 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 really muddy, and you're leaving ruts anywhere you go on your farm. Don't pick the bale up all the way. Just stick your spikes into it. Let the bale set on the ground, and you can actually roll the bale out to your cow herd. Uh, we've pulled them on the bare ground with netting on up to a mile. That's how muddy it was. And we did that for two weeks. It wouldn't stop raining. Yeah. So if you pick up a 1,200-pound bale, even with an ATV, and you put it on those spindles when it's wet out, you're going to leave a rut all the way out to your cow herd. Leave it on the ground. Yep. We found that works really well. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, the uh, so when we store these in the summertime, we don't leave this this exposed to the sun. That belting and this handle, the UV will eat on that. So you take this loose, winch it up, and just put a tarp over it. Don't let the sun shine on this. It will decrease the life of your spray. Right, right. Uh, you've got a safety chain now. We didn't, we didn't come out with safety nope. chains. We put safety chains on them now. And you don't have to ever lift this. It, it, people have called and said that it needs a jack and everything. They don't need a jack whenever you push them down. This one here's a little tight because it's got paint, new paint on the springs. But you, uh, whenever you unhook them. Wait a minute, let me bring it off there. Get that stuff down there. Whenever you unhook them, that's just as light as it is. I mean, it's not heavy at all. It's like a teeter-totter. And then your hitch is up out of the, the dirt, the rain, everything else. You're good to go. Next time you want to hook it up, you can just let your jack down if it's your pitch down if it's too high. Watch your face. And then you can roll it to wherever you need it to go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this this really is a tool, folks. Uh, for those of y'all just starting out on land that's really bankrupt soil-wise, you got a lot of broom sedge, a lot of moss and cedars, and maybe you've cut some of the cedars off, or maybe you're doing some civil pasture work where you're going in and thinning out some trees. You've got stumps out there. You bring a truck out there and try and get some hay on that, you're going to tear your truck up. What if you could take this with a flotation tires on your foliage, you can run over a stump with this thing. The bale's on the ground. You can run over a stump because you're not doing 30 mile an hour. <laughs> you're, right. You're, you're traversing down through there. So this is a great way to take a fungal dominated area, which is timber, clear out the brush in there, the undesirable trees, bring a bale on over in the wintertime and feed your livestock in there. You're getting sunlight down to the ground and now you've brought in a carbon source. Hey, feed it to those animals. I don't care if it's hair, hair sheep, goats or cows, they're going to build that soil up. They're going to change it to more of a microbial. So you're going to have some fungi and some bacteria, and then you're going to start growing grass. You're going to start capturing more carbon. You're going to start growing more uh, forage for your animals. And folks, every day that animals can feed themselves on your farm, you're putting money in your pocket. You're not taking it out. So buy your hay. People like to bale hay. Go buy it. Bring it onto your farm and unroll it with this. Don't feed it in a bale ring. Right. It's terrible. You're putting all your fertility in a 30-foot circle. They kill the soil. They stomp their calves because the calves are right up against the bale ring in the wintertime. If you, like our herd, we've got 350 head. We can feed those cows morning and night three, if we're on full feed. In other words, it's snowing. They can't get to the grass, whatever. Three bales in the morning, three at night. Do you think I could feed 350 head if I had bale rings with three no. bales in the morning? No. No way. No way. No way. You're talking maybe no. 15 to 20 cows on each right. bale ring. Right. 
Right. What well, the rest of them supposed to eat? Yeah. <laughs> the leftovers. The leftovers. There isn't any leftovers. Yeah. So if you unroll it, you're putting that the pee, the urine, and the poop on a hundred yards up and down these old poor ridges. You're spreading your fertility around your farm. That's what this is about. That's why I built it. Yeah. I got tired of it. And I, was, I was pushing them by hand, folks. Jan and I out there at night pushing these big bales down these hills. Mm -hmm. We had a few get away from us. We had one go across Route F down here, jumped a bar, a woven wire fence, not a woven wire, high tinsel fence. Luckily, there weren't any cars coming. Right. And it ended up down in the woods across the road. Now you just lost it. Yeah. Kendall tried to build pond. two or three, three different pond. unrollers of his own. Bought a different one, still didn't like it. Yep. Got connected with Greg and... And oh, it's safe. The, That's the thing. Exactly this is safe. And well, it's easy. I can't ever back up to anything. So I can just grab this puppy, you know, pull it straight down anywhere. If the four-wheeler's over there, I can push it uphill. Yep. You know, it's light. It's easy. It's it's easy to... It's easy. Yeah. It's just easy. Yeah. yeah. Well, like last night, we got home late because we have four kids, so we have football games and everything else. It's almost dark. We were pushing time, and she jumps on side by side, and I'm already down there with the cows. And like I told her, just grab a bale on roller and come on down to the field. And it's just time saving. Yeah. It is. It is time saving. Headache yeah. saving. It's easy. Well, yeah. And it and it works. It truly works. <coughs> you know, the first time Greg ever come to our our farm, he told me. He said. <laughs> I said, Greg, what am I supposed to do here? You know, I said, I want to do like you, but he said, well, Kendall, he said, your, your ground's crap and your cows are crap, and if you don't feed them all winter, they're going to die anyway. <laughs> and I thought, man, Greg, I told you to be truthful, but not that truthful. <laughs> and we started unrolling hay, and we now have, we don't have enough cows now. Where before, we couldn't handle. And how many years has that been? Uh, been three years Three now. years. Three, three years, years now. Yeah. Yep. And we have so much grass. We were down there again last night, and we're moving cows in grass this tall that have already been, it's been grazed once already, and we're just, yep. we've doubled our cow herd since Greg had been there, yep. and we're getting ready to double again because we just now have so much grass. Yeah. We're, so, I'm glad you brought that up, you know, you know, people feel bad about feeding hay. It is an expense, but if you add in the fertility factor of that, right, there's 15 to $25 worth of fertility in every big round bale, depending on who you talk to. Right. I think Jim Garrish has actually used the figures like $30, $30 worth of fertility. So if you're taking that $30 and you're spreading it around your, you got to feed the animal something, right. you're out of grass, Right. put that fertility out there across your farm. It's huge. Right. It's well, huge. I'd rather leave a little on the ground and, oh, and move absolutely. them off of it than, than see mud strip where we had unrolled it somewhere. You, I'm glad you brought that up, Kendall, because I go to people and say, well, they're going to waste it. It's not waste. You're feeding the soil biology. So get used to seeing some left after. I don't want my animals to clean it up when there's nothing on the ground. Right. You can feed your soil. Right. And guys, I thought he was crazy whenever he yeah. first told me this. <laughs> I, I thought Kendall was leaving too much even last year. And then this spring and this summer and still now when we still have so much grass, I'm like, dang, Greg's really on to something, man. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. really, he's yeah. really on to it. I'm kind of liking you more yeah. than I <laughs> Listen. You're all day. Um, all right. Well, we need to talk about shipping, ordering. Right. Right. Um, we've got lots of shipments going out for unrollers. Um it's easiest to get you an unroller if you watch the Green Pastures Farm Facebook page, the Reject Ranch Facebook page, we'll be posting areas that we're heading to because the more unrollers we get going in one area, the cheaper the cost gets for delivery. So um, be patient. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get a load put together in that direction, but we're working on getting them. And to, it makes the shipping make, cheaper. Yep, right. yep. We want everybody cheaper. to get them as cheap as they can because everybody for needs one. Twenty four hundred dollars I mean, is a lot of money. I yeah. mean, it was so much for us. It still is a huge amount for us. Yes, and if is. I get something for twenty four hundred dollars, I want my money's worth, and then I don't want to have to pay a fortune on shipping. Right no. to get it there. Right yeah. because man, that's just hard. So we're working, trying to get everybody's costs down to where we think it's reasonable, and oh. sometimes it takes a couple weeks. Yeah. But, you know, talking about cost, so if you buy this machine, is this something you got to go out and buy every year? No. They, <laughs> no, <laughs> you'll have this thing easy. Probably your whole 20 life. years, yeah. 30 yeah. years, right. Yeah, as long you as you take care of that winch, you know. Yeah. The winch and tires the are the only tires. thing it can yeah. be used. Yeah. I mean, 
That's it's it's, into, it's, it it's built as tough up. as we can build it. I yep. worked for a rock quarry for 18 years, <laughs> and the smallest piece of steel we ever used was half inch thick. And we build these things to last because it's tough. Yeah, yeah. So what's the um, what's your web page uh, or your, your the Reject Ranch Facebook page, and then Greg and Jan have the Green Farms Green, green Pastures Green Pastures Farm Farm. farm. Yep. Green dot net. Farm dot net. Yeah. Yep. And yep. the Facebook page too. Yep. Yep. Well, folks, I think we've covered uh, what we wanted to cover here today. I uh, just wanted to introduce everybody to the actual background of our bailing roars, uh, Amber. A Amber and, and Kendall. Am Amber and Kendall. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he even put on He's a new coat a, to do that. Yeah, he got such a girly name. You can't help it, though. You know? I feel sorry for all the Kendalls out there. <laughs> anyway, thank you all. Um, we're going to go ahead and check out here, but don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And on the way out, hit that like. I'd appreciate it. And we'll see you all down the road. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye.